I absolutely love Les Paul Jr. style guitars. So many of my favorite players from Keith Richards to Johnny Thunders from the New York Dolls have played Jr. style guitars. So when I was coming up as a guitar player, the idea of owning a Jr. was always so, so appealing to me. Now I do own a Jr. It's not a great one. So I'm currently in the market for a really good Jr. And in this video, we're gonna talk about a really good Jr. This thing, is from my good friend Darren over at Daniel's Guitars. This is a guitar known as the Riff Raff Junior Light. Daniel's Guitars, for anyone who doesn't know, is a one-man operation, a guy called Darren, and he's a good friend of mine, I've known him for a few years now, and he builds incredible, incredible handmade instruments from England, from his very small workshop. Now, if you've never heard of his stuff before, there's some links in the description where you can check out what he does. Darren and I have known each other through a couple of trade shows over the years, and I would love to get my hands permanently on one of his guitars. I've played so many of them over the years, and I've just loved everything that he's built. He's a great luthier, makes some really cool stuff. He cut his teeth actually doing a lot of 59 replica star guitars, which are incredible by the way, but he also does a lot of his own stuff as well. Now what Darren is interested in is vintage spec, but with a few modern twists. And that's kind of what we're looking at in this video. So on the surface, this looks like a junior, but there's a few cool things that this has that a traditional junior doesn't have which we're gonna check out in this video. Just wanna let you guys know, this is not a sponsored video. Darren is not paying me to make this video and I'm not keeping this thing, unfortunately, as much as I would love to tell him that it went missing in the mail. This will be going back to him. As always though, all the thoughts and opinions you can hear in the video are my own. So, the Riff Raff Junior Lite. This is Darren's kind of entry level model that he offers with Daniel's guitars. So with his guitars all being very high spec with great woods, great components. He basically uses the best of everything. They do come with a price tag to reflect that. Now, like anything in this world, if you're spending that kind of money on something, you are getting your value for this because these are incredible instruments, like I said. This thing is his, what he would describe as his entry-level model. Now, this is still a pricey guitar, but when you factor in that this is a hand-built instrument, he would sell this for 1,800 pounds in the UK. So for the amount of work and time that goes into this and the level of materials involved, that's not a bad price. Spec-wise, this is kind of close to vintage, but like I said, he's got a few little things under the hood that he likes to bring to the table as well because he's interested in kind of refining vintage designs. So spec-wise, we've got a sustainable African mahogany body. This is a really solid body, really kind of weighty and robust like you'd expect a junior to be, it kind of feels like you could throw it around a stage and it wouldn't fall apart on you. We've got a neck, which is also sustainable African mahogany. On top of that, we have a Indian rosewood fingerboard. And then on top of that, we have, I'm not sure what frets he's used on this one. He usually uses pretty vintage spec 
frets. These actually look a little bit bigger than the typical frets you might find on an old school junior. I'm not sure exactly what the fret size is, but I'm sure Darren will see this video and put that down below in the comments. Hardware wise, we've got this Cluson wraparound bridge. So again, it's the vintage thing here. We've got the wraparound tailpiece, but it is compensated. So there's that little modern twist. We've got a Mojo Pickups P90. This thing sounds fantastic. It's got the right amount of kind of vintage kind of grunt coupled with that bright attack that you expect from a junior. Volume and tone. Inside here we have CTS pots with orange drop capacitors. He's very big on the vintage aesthetics. So obviously we've got a single ply pick guard on this as well. Cherry satin finish, very thinly applied. So this would relic really nicely. Then up at the headstock end, we've got a set of Goto SD90 tuners. So these obviously modern tuners that are very, very good at keeping tune, but from the front, they have that vintage aesthetic. And obviously we have Darren's own take on the headstock there. We're not using any classic open book designs here. It's kind of his own thing. This guitar also has an oil finish rather than a nitro or poly finish. That will help with keeping the costs down, but also it's very open pore. So obviously if you're into your guitars aging naturally, the oil finish is going to go a long way in, you know, actually allowing you to age the guitar yourself by playing it. So spec wise, that's actually it because it's a junior. It's not really meant to be a guitar with a huge spec list. It's a very simple instrument. Now, Darren, like I said, has done a few refinements to this. So one thing you might notice is there are some subtle contours here on the body. One there for the forearm, which isn't on a regular junior, because obviously this is normally a slab body. We also have a belly cut here, kind of strat-ish. But then the other thing is this neck heel. Now, usually on a junior, we'd have a big blocky neck join. What Darren does is he really kind of shaves those in. So that's a very modern kind of design style where we've got this really kind of shaped neck heel so we can really get up to those top frets but it still feels like a vintage instrument because we've got the big fat neck. Now one thing I know that Darren is very particular with is his neck calves. He carves everything by hand and he actually strings the guitars up before he carves the neck so you actually get that kind of you know ready to play feel as he's doing the neck carve because as we know things change when we put strings on and we put guitars under tension, wood moves, so Darren actually strings the guitars up to tension before he carves the neck fully, just to make sure that the, the playability and the feel is really there as well. He's definitely someone who knows what a player wants in an instrument, and I really do think he delivers. This thing is great. I love juniors, like I said, so we're going to hear how this thing sounds now. Now, obviously, we've only got one pickup, which might seem like a limitation, but there are a few things you can do with juniors to really get a bit of extra movement. So if you're thinking you might you know, miss the neck pickup, you probably won't because the tone control is where that happens. So if you've got a really good tone control, so this does have a premium CTS pot, good capacitors like the orange drops that are in this and a good pickup, the tone control can almost mimic a neck pickup in the right way. When we turn the tone control down to maybe like three to five in that kind of range, just shaves off enough top end to give us not a neck pickup sound, but it'll get us in that ballpark. And then obviously we can go all the way down for that classic throaty sound. So a guitar like this really makes you think about how you use the controls on the guitar to manipulate the sound rather than worrying about pickup selections. So let's plug it in and hear how it sounds. So gear wise, I've got the Riff Raff Junior plugged into the Blackstar Studio 10 6L6, which is running completely clean. The Blackstar is going via the Two Notes Torpedo Captor X. And the overdrive that you're going to hear in the video is the Wampler Gearbox. So I'm going to be using two different sides of that as well. I've got the Klon side set for like a crunchy tone and then the Marshall in a box side for a bit of a high gain tone when I stack the pedal later on in the video. But we're going to start with the clean tone. So obviously you're only going to hear one pickup here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a bit and I'm going to roll the tone control back to about halfway just to warm it up a bit and then all the way back down for that real throaty sound. I'll do that for each of the tones.
So as you can hear, it's got a lot of sparkle because it's a bridge single coil essentially being a P90. But as we roll that tone back, we can get some neck pickup-ish kind of tones. P90s are incredibly dynamic. I was playing kind of soft there. I was strumming about this intensity. But if we dig in more, the P90 actually opens up a bit. These pickups have got a lot of headroom in how you can attack them. That's what makes them such great pickups. I love the sound of a P90. So now I'm gonna turn on the clon side of the gearbox and we're gonna hear some crunchier tones. So this does get really throaty when we take that tone all the way down. I think if you set the tone control to maybe like three to four with a bit of drive, that's where we get the kind of most convincing neck pickup-ish tones. Just takes that bite off. It's not a neck pickup in the conventional sense, but if you like that tone, it can kind of get you in that ballpark. And also, like I said at the start of the video, when you're using one pickup, it makes you think about what you play more rather than, you know, all the tools and tips and tricks we have at our at disposal. I think a single pickup guitar is really good for that because it makes you really focus on how to get the tone out of your instrument. Now, the high gain side of the gearbox is stacked on top, so that's the Marshall in a box side. Now, Word of warning, it's a P90, so it's going to be a bit noisy when I stop playing because we're stacking a lot of gain here into a single coil. They are noisy by default. That's just one of the quirks of a P90 that we have to accept if we want the glorious tone. So here's how it sounds with some high gain. <laughs>
So this thing actually handles high gain really well. P90s do get noisy with high gain, but they can take it. They can play high gain stuff and still sound quite chunky. I find that they're like a humbucker with a little bit more clarity tonally. <laughs> Plenty of grunt in that to play any kind of rock stuff. You could probably even stretch as far as to play some classic metal with this thing. Now, obviously, a P90 Loaded Junior is definitely more at home in the kind of blues classic rock world, but it can do a lot more. And that's why I love them. I think this is a great guitar. You know, like I said, I'm a big fan of all the stuff that Darren makes. Anyway, he made a Paisley Junior, which is a green Paisley Junior, which we actually talked about in a video we made together, maybe like two years ago now from the date of shooting this video. There'll be a link to that in the top corner somewhere. That guitar still haunts me. Number one, that I don't own it, and number two, that he hasn't sold it yet. So one day, one day, I think that might be finding its way to me, I hope. But um, yeah, wishful thinking anyway. But yeah, like I said, go and check out some of the links down below. Check out the stuff that Darren is building over at Daniel's Guitars. They're incredible guitars. They're not cheap, but you really do get what you pay for with these things. Let me know what you guys think of the sound and the look of this thing down below in the comments. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that like button as well. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. And I'll see you very soon.